Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be heading down to Corey's house, going to check out the 800 gallon tank, I haven't seen it since they aquascaped it, and I also got some mascara barbs to give Jimmy, and also some Maltese, some shell dwellers to give Corey. So stay tuned, should be a lot of fun. So the mascara barbs have been living in this tote for the last couple days and it's probably going to be kind of a pain to get them out of here because I can't see in there. So first things first, I got to get everything out of here and then we will try to scoop out some fish. Alright, just briefly checking in, we do have all nine mascara barbs in the bucket. Alright, and then next I just need to catch, I don't know, maybe six to eight multis, maybe ten, I don't know, I have quite a few, hopefully I can get a good mix of sexes in there. But they're going to be not adults, maybe some adults, I don't know. I'm going to go look right now. All right, there we go. There's one scoop of the net. I definitely got two males. You can see right there, there's a male. There's a male. Definitely at least four females in here. That one might be a male too. So it should be a nice good mix of sexes to get his colony started out. Got the mascara barb. Now I just need to find some lids and then I'm on the road. All right, so we're all packed up. It was a little chilly out, so I got my awesome cichlid keeper hoodie on. And now I'm going to head down to Corey's. All right, so I'm here at Corey's, here with Jimmy, and uh, tell us what you're doing. I am throwing your mascara barbs in here. And my ones mascara barbs? Are mine now. <laughs> <laughs> right now I'm cleaning everything up though. I usually clean them up every daily on the little pine. Pines the new oh, ones. you even got it aquascaped in there? Sort of, yeah. I don't know if we can see it, but. Yeah, it's hard. There's a bunch of red cherry shrimps in there. Mm. A lot of chopped snails. In Food. The corner there. Yep. So. We have really no other place to put them, so in the pond they go. What else is in here? I see there's um, a fish in there. I don't know what it is. There's platinum rice fish in here. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And uh, the carrot gold. Um, in there. Carrot gold? What? It, like, <laughs> gold carrot? 24 <laughs> carrot gold? I don't even know. Whatever. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, so. Not even gonna acclimate, just gonna scoop and dip. Plop and drop. Yeah. Dang, these guys are big. So, how long have you had them? Oh, uh, I don't know, four or five months. Oh my gosh. I'm down back. There you go. Oh, instantly color up with the black. They are jumpers, though. Hopefully they won't jump. This is a pretty good clearance though. I don't know. They were clearing the bucket. Of course they were also scared. Are you serious? Mm hmm That's a pretty far jump. Say hi. Hi! <laughs> hi! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Do you know what the temperature is in there? It is 77. Warm. Oh, perfect. The black draws the heat, so they heat up pretty good. Yeah, they're gonna like that better than my little tote. Oh, look at them schooling already. That's cool. I like that. And oh, they're already coloring up. Yeah, they are. Nice. Should have brought the underwater fish. camera. You have one? Where's the GoPro? Yeah, I have a like twenty dollar GoPro knockoff. Oh, the Z or <laughs> Y or whatever. Whatever, Chinese crap. Yeah, I'll put the GoPro on that later. All right, so we're checking out the baby turtles eating bloodworms. How many do you have now? I don't know. I honestly don't, even don't know. know how to count. I can see three there, two there, five here. Yeah, they're just hidden all over in this wood. Yep. Of course, I can't see with the glare. Yeah, the glare makes it impossible, but some on top of the wood. There's a bunch nested like in the wood. Like there's one, two, three, four right there, and then above is at least two, three more, and then there's one, two, three, four. Someone on the camera will have counted that up, plus two more up here, so whatever that number is. And are you going to keep this puffer over here? Yeah. Last time uh, you were undecided. Uh, Does he have a name yet? Ladybird. Ladybird? Yeah. What if it's a guy? Ladybird. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Who picked that name? I did. All right. Because my, my very first puffer was Hank from King of the Hill. Ladybird. Oh, the dog. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's, that's how that came to be. Right, I get it. And uh, so yeah, now I gotta put in a big tank. That's half the reason why, like, 
that's getting torn down over there. One, they're too tall for me, so that's a problem. And two, I want to put some bigger tanks over there. And, uh, you know, if I love those, we'll put some more big tanks in through here. But that's step one and see if I want bigger tanks or I just need less tanks or whatever it is. I think you want bigger tanks. I think so too. So I'm, I'm going to do that. So that's why I, I bought those four 125 gallons. That's the plan over there is actually four 125s at, at like where I don't have to get on a ladder. That sounds awesome. Yeah, so here's where we are, well, where Corey put the multis. Just with tank I had crushed coral in, and obviously there's plants, and I don't have any shells yet, but I'm going to order some shells, maybe on Amazon or something. Can you just it. bring some home from the store? We sold them, if you can believe it. We're out of shells all together. Well, shellies are pretty popular right now. Yeah, so now you're going to decide how big of a tank could be huge. My wife loves them, so... New uh, new fish for the wife's tank? Possibly. We're, we're talking about doing a whole redo. That's why it hasn't shown up, really. And ever since we did the house remodel, it's been covered in allergy. And we need to do something, but we haven't chose what to redo yet. And uh, maybe it comes out here. Maybe it stays in there. Maybe this... Like, I know I'm not going to keep it... Well, I won't say I know, but most likely I will not keep it to only 20 gallons just because I really love this fish. And, uh, you know, my first time I ever did multis ever, which was the second... No, not the second aquarium, but it was my original aquarium ever, but the second thing I did with it was multis and sips, and that was a long, long time ago, and I really enjoyed it, and uh, this will be like the third or fourth time I've had multis. You know, I get them for two years, you breed them, you get a little bored, you want your space back, and then I haven't had them for about two years, and so now I want them back. Before this, I had the Similis, and that was back in my old house and everything. I was, I was under... I was under 2,000 subscribers when I had Simulus. It was a long time ago. And so... Did you have to go to the doctor for that? That's right. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, dang, not the Simulus again. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I like keeping them... Well, this is not going to be shock, but I actually like keeping these with guppies and things like that. No. You put them in a taller tank, it actually works. I've done it. And you get all the color. They just don't... Didn't the I just see a guppy roaming around in there? There is a female guppy in there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a guppy in every aquarium in this building. I swear, they're everywhere. Alright, so, as I scare all these fish, here with uh, Jimmy, tell me about these gobies. Well, where'd they go? Uh, oh, there they're back here. So these gobies came from, actually, Kang Lee had shipped them to me, and um, the place where he got them from, this is their second time shipp shipping to the United States, so I guess they're pretty rare. Well, what kind are they? Um, they're called Chinese Mandarin gobies, but when you Google them, of course, the seawater ones, or seawater, saltwater ones pop up. <laughs> <laughs> it's still seawater. <laughs> yeah, same thing. But uh, they look really cool. As you can see, like um, you saw earlier, the eyes are totally iridescent. Yeah, of course, but, I just scared them. Yep, they're gone now. But, so it's a male and a female? Um, that's what we're guessing. And so. you're going to spawn them, right? Well, they haven't been too happy <laughs> moving around. Moving across, across the country. and being in a hot car and everything. But they're probably some of the hardiest fish I've ever had. Yeah, at least they made it. Yep, yeah, they made it. All right, so here we are at the 800 gallon. And I saw you swimming around in this thing recently, didn't I? Yes, you did. So did everyone else, For I'm sure. For comparison, look at this. Wait, let me get back a little bit. This is insane. I'm killing myself. Yeah, but you're only, what, three feet tall? Yeah. And a half. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm um, five feet seven, so this is pretty, pretty crazy. Oh, I didn't even notice you had the overhead sump going now. Yeah, look how clean that water is. Yeah, it's... Because there's no fish in there, look. Comparatively, there's still 29 four-inch clown loaches <laughs> in there. Let's, let's... It just looks like there's nothing. Look, I can see one, see? Oh, there's two. Yeah, you gotta stop moving. They're still real skittish. Especially with the sunlight coming in and stuff like that, so... So, uh, throw you under the bus, what else are you gonna put in here? I don't know uh, if you've announced it yet, have you? Kind of. I know that we're going to do clownlips for sure. I'm pretty set on tiger barbs, but I go back and forth on it every hour because once they go in, I'm never going to want to catch them back out. And then... I do so are you going back and forth because you have something else in mind? or? No, just because... Well, what I don't want to have happen is I don't want to put 300 tiger barbs in there and be like, oh, that's not really what I was going for. And then what I'll, what I'll do is it won't look bad. It's not gonna look bad, but if I'm not, if I don't go, oh, this is magical, I love to sit here and watch it, I'll let myself down. So far, 
I love to sit here and look at this tank, but I don't want to be filled with regret going, dang it, why didn't I do Odessa barbs, or why didn't I just do more loaches, or why didn't I do, and I know I'll be too lazy to catch the target barbs out, and everyone, I'm sure, like, no, you can catch them, like, mm. trust me, you go and catch stuff out of, like, even a 400-gallon tank, and you'll, you can get, you can get 200 out of those 300 pretty easy. I'll give you that. Those last 100 will take you days. No joke. You'll drain it down to here. You'd either have to take out every rock and everything, or you're not going to do it. And so, yeah, I really, because right now I love to see the school of the clown loaches. And what's probably going to happen is the tiger bars look so close to clown loaches, they'll school together. And I might lose the really cool effect of just the clown loaches moving around. And so if I went with Odessa barbs or just anything else, they probably wouldn't school up, and that might be even cooler. But at the same time, tiger barbs and clown loaches in one big school looks pretty cool. So I, I do have them. So like I'm, I'm close enough that I own 300 tiger barbs. Like it could happen at any minute. Uh, and then I also have a giraffe catfish that might be... Oh, is be, that what that was? I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I've got a giraffe catfish that might be the monster fish in here. Just because they're cool. But as far as uh, the giraffe cat, it in theory is going to churn all this. Like when we're getting some like algae and stuff down in the gravel, it's going to be able to clean all that out, and we'll see how it goes. Like what I'm afraid is he's just going to eat and blow all the sand like into the rocks, and you'll just see like acrylic, and then I got to put a lot of sand, a lot more sand in there. But at least the giraffe cat eventually gets big enough you can catch him back out. Because he's, you know, once they're a foot or something, it's not that hard to catch a fish that's big. Way harder to catch a tiny, or a, a lot of tiny fish. Now, do you keep this blue spotlight on? And so, then... I literally installed it six hours ago. I have no idea. Hmm. The goal, the long, long, long-term goal is to make it look cool after all the lights go out. And then we've got this live camera right here, which I ordered a mount for and everything. Um, but it actually has a pretty cool display. We needed to mount it, like, right here, though. And then you could see it 24 hours a day, just like the Murphy cam. But we're still working on it because it's got a magnet and it's a really wide-angle lens. So if we put it like across the room, it shows like the entire room. And you can't really see anything. We need it to be like right here. So it's in the works. Then anyone can like well, because everyone wants to see Murphy eat, and there's no scheduled time. So I've got it set right here, this auto feeder, and that's gonna. I can have it on a schedule so people could tune in like, oh yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern, they eat. And this whole horde will come up and eat, and I think that'll be super cool. So we'll see though. And then I'm on the fence on whether I want to get like another one of those giant power heads. But that's only a 50% though, right? I had it at 100% earlier, and they handle it just fine. I just wanted to put it on 50% for a few days, see if they act any different. Like, what if they were, because they're kind of shy, right? Every time I move, they dart. But what if it was because it was too powerful? But I don't think that's the case anymore. Could you tighten it? Or there, there's a bunch of options. There, okay. Those like manuals are pretty thick that I have it. But there's, there's a lot of options when you plug in another one. Like all of a sudden, then you can get it so that they like pulse, and you can make the water like rock back and forth oh, and do all kinds of cool that's things. Fancy. Sounds like you need to get another one. Yeah, yeah it's only like five hundred dollars, <laughs> and then I go, oh, I'm not using that feature at all. You know, but it, it could be really cool. I'm trying to. I'm trying to space out my toys. You know, I don't want to spend a bunch of money and be like, there's nothing to do, dang it. I kind of want to go, ooh, that was cool. And like in a month going, I want to do something else. Okay, let me add this power head. Like, let me, you know, I want to, I want to savor it instead of just like, yep, I bought every bell and whistle, I'm done. I threw all the fish in, done, 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 dang it. Well, might as well just give me the tank. Yep. Put it next to the 240 for a year. I was say, so you can start to drop the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we do have to we do have to do some more work. I was gonna do it, but then you know we went out to dinner, obviously. But I've got the logo, I've got the aquarium co-op logo to put on the stand, which is in vinyl that uh, we have, and then like a little powered by Fluol logo and stuff like that. So there's still more stuff to do, and I got to line everything back up. We've been taking these on and off so much that like there's gaps and stuff because oh let me get in yeah, there. Yeah, man, that's looking pretty bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so bad. I'm ruins, sorry. The, ruins the whole tank. I know, but. We were so busy on aquascaping and all that and everything moved around that I was, I'll, I'll fix it, I promise. So, it drives me nuts anyway. Going, dang it, I gotta move that. So, and then now, I, well I also gotta, I think I'm gonna hook up an auto doser uh, for fertilizers 
And then also um, some air stones. If you want to take a trip, I can show you this crazy cool air stone I have. Sure. So over here, I'm testing another product as always. Oh, I saw that earlier. Yeah, they're imported from Poland. Poland? Yep, they're all handmade. And so... Oh, you can see the tiger bars too. Yeah, it's not the optimal setup. But it can handle, I'm putting a lot of air through there, and this little adapter I have in there, it's not perfect obviously, uh, but I think if I had a couple of those in the 800 gallon, they'd really add a lot of uh, air. And I might, put, I might put one in the main tank and I might put one in the sump, or maybe just both in the sump. What I'm afraid of is that big power head's gonna blow all these bubbles and they're just gonna you know, create a tornado effect and not, like, and not look good, so. Yeah, well, so you can see I've been really power feeding these barbs because they're all super fat. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to look pretty sweet if you do yeah, barbs. Well, they really school well, and that's what I really like about them. So I think it's going to look cool. That's why I'm, I'm obviously investing time and money into this, but I just haven't convinced my own brain. Every hour I'm going, but what if it's the wrong thing? No, I don't want to, like, ruin it. Well, that's why you just throw up Jimmy in the tank and he'll catch him. Well, then I just have to put a predator in there. That's what you have to do is some of them will eat them. So in here is the next group of clown loaches to go in. A little bit smaller, I couldn't buy as big of ones, um, but there's 58 of them in here. I had one loss through quarantine so far. You can see there's meds in the water. Um, and I use flubendazole. So first I did my normal uh, routine of like ICX, erythromycin, and general cure. And then I put them through flubendazole, which I found is a liquid version. And so I've been playing with that and I'm not, I've only dosed it like with four or five tanks, so I'm not ready to like tell everyone like, oh, this is the dosage that works well, but so far it's working well in the few tanks I've used it with shrimp and clown loaches. And so I figure if I can get those, test it on a few more hardier fish and their dosage is probably okay, but I don't wanna, you know, release something that's horrible on people without knowing what I'm doing. So that's what I've been testing. So do you have any plans for the waters yet? Not yet. I just keep growing them because I right now I think they're the ugliest fish on the planet. But when they get this big, they're like one of the coolest looking fish on the planet. They get this really cool olive green color, and I want to breed them kind of bad. But that's you know if we put the 125s over here, I'm totally thinking I can play with some more of that stuff. And so that's mostly why it's like yeah, let's set up big tanks, and then like if I really really fall in love with them and the clown loaches destroy those plants, we'll just put them in with the clown loaches because it's. Clown loaches do this to plants, they poke holes. And that's just kind of what they do. But sometimes you'll get a group going and they won't touch plants for two years. And then one day they'll decide, oh, these are tasty and destroy them. In that case, I'll put waros in there. All right, so that's the video. Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe and like, and see Bye -bye. ya.